Hello again, it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. I want to tell you a little something before we get going here. Um, as you know, we tape these shows and um, even so you can call, someone will come to the phone for you uh, while we are on the air. Now, at the time of this taping, we are all struggling with this planetary alignment that is um, on the way back to normal. Um, I believe today is the 8th of May uh, in the year 2000. And so, and because everything is perfect for the moment, um, I have given my crew a, a full hand today because if we're not perfect today, that's just fine. We are all struggling. And so therefore, um, we're going to make you part of our um, alignment show. How is that? In the meantime, um, I'm very pleased to introduce a guest to you that has come a long ways. And um, he made it a point to come and arrive at this time because he thought it was kind of neat to be in uh, the middle of this madness right about now. And his name is Chris. How are you, Chris? Hello, Lily. I'm fine, thank you. You've come a long ways. Come a long way, but uh, then I've been traveling, I guess, for a long time, all my life, mm -hmm. and uh, still looking for where I belong. And uh, I enjoy traveling. I cannot stay in one place for too long because I get uh, it gets to me after a while, and I enjoy meeting people and seeing new countries. Okay, so let's kind of go to the beginning a little bit. It was a glorious day when you were born. And where would that, where did, where were you born? I was born in Singapore mm -hmm. um, a long time ago. Now I have no memory of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then together with my family, uh, we moved to Germany where mm -hmm. we lived for some time. Again, I have no memory of that. Then we were living in England in Southampton, which is a beautiful part of England next to a new forest. I was there for, I think, 23 years. And then one day, I always spoke to people about traveling. And, you know, it's easy to sit down with friends and talk about traveling, and people will say, yeah, but you'll never do it, you'll never do it. And I remember one July morning, it was 1990, I woke up, the sun mm -hmm. was shining, and there was a signal there, I guess. and. Um, Something happened that day. I jumped out of bed and I thought, yep, today there's something going to happen. I didn't have a passport mm -hmm. at that time. So that day I had a crazy idea to sort out my passport. So I traveled by train to Wales, mm -hmm. sort out my passport. There were many complications with having been born in Singapore. And I guess so. Well, at one point I thought that uh, there'd be a problem with the papers, but I mm -hmm. guess the universe worked there and everything got turned out okay. And that evening I was on my way to France and I had some, how much did I have, 65 pounds in my pocket. How much is 65 pounds? 65 pounds, uh, wow, well, not a lot. No, 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 <laughs> give me numbers, give me numbers. <laughs> give me numbers, 65 pounds, I'd mm -hmm. have to think about that one. You're looking at maybe, now I'm going to be wrong here, but it's about 100 bucks, I guess. Then you had more than what I usually have. That's why I was pressing you for an amount here. <laughs> Not when I finished, I didn't. Not yeah. when I finished. So you set out to go to France, what? Now I set out to go to Israel. Mm -hmm. My original idea was to perhaps work on a kibbutz out there. Mm -hmm. But I never got there. Um, it's a long, long story about what happened, but many coincidence ha coincidences mm -hmm. happened along the way. Well, I kind of want to go take it step by step so the friends can see sort of where your journey is, you know, ha has taken you. And so we got a little less than an hour, and so we can, we can go from, jump from one place to another, because I have a feeling some kind of way that's all going to fit together at a later time. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, basically, when I was in France, mm -hmm. I, was, I traveled to the south of France. I wasn't clever. I didn't hitchhike. I paid for the train. Mm -hmm. So I arrived in southern France thinking, yeah, I'll have work. Now, the idea was to uh, pick tobacco down mm -hmm. there. And I arrived there. My name wasn't on the list. Aye. So um, that was kind of a shock. And then I had to travel back. And I hitchhiked because the money had gone. There was mm -hmm. no work and everything. Um, and the journey was interesting. I guess it was my first time hitchhiking, hitchhiking. Mm -hmm. And I arrived in Paris. Now I had to telephone my mother um, 
to say that I'm coming home because I have no money, I have no work. Mm -hmm. She was very angry. She was angry because it was my life dream to travel. Mm -hmm. And I had to wait in Paris for three days, and none of the cars stop in Paris. People there aren't too friendly. Oh, my. Um, and it was very hot weather. Now, in the evening, as I was waiting near the road, one uh, woman came running towards me. And at first, I thought it was a small boy. You see, when my wife watches this, she's going to kill me for saying it, but I thought she was <laughs> a small boy. And um, she started speaking, and she said, oh, are you, are you hot? Are you thirsty? I said, yes. And she said, would you like some cold tea? Yes, thank you very much. That was that we started talking. Now, mm -hmm. she is Slovak. That's uh, right, she is. Mm -hmm. Slovak, when I say that I've been in Slovakia for 10 years, I'll get to that part later. Mm -hmm. But um, many people confuse Slovakia with Slovenia. Now, Slovenia is That's Yugoslavia. That's right, yeah, I do that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Slovenia is Yugoslavia. Slovakia mm -hmm. is the former Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we started talking together, and mm -hmm. she was in Paris because she's speaking very good French, and she was there mm -hmm. as a translator. And she was together with some students of hers. And um, she was very far from her campsite, so we went to Versailles. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know what that is. Lovely gardens there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has. And um, we climbed into the gardens, whether it was illegal or not, or legal or not, I don't know, but it happened. Mm -hmm. And we sat on a bench and we were talking, and her, her friends were off playing, mm -hmm. I don't know, somewhere they were doing something. And we sat on a bench and we started talking. Now, she started to talk, I think. We did the usual thing, like, where are you from? Why are you here? Yeah, that's where we're going with that, yeah. Um, so I told her pretty much the same as I've told mm -hmm. um, the viewers. And um, then the conversation, now it was a full moon mm -hmm. for a while, because then uh, it got... As I say, it was night anyway, but the clouds started to move in. And there was a thunderstorm, but there was no rain. It was just lightning. Mm -hmm. now, we were up in the garden, and Paris was down there beneath us. And it was romantic, I guess. I'm never a romantic person, but mm -hmm. um, I try to be sometimes. Um, well, we keep that in mind. <laughs> well, it's difficult sometimes, but I try. Yeah. And um, yeah, we were talking, and she's, she was talking about Atlantis. That's right. And now I've always had an interest, as far as I can remember, in, uh, let's say, strange things mm -hmm. or mysteries. Um, there is a difference there, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. Is there? Is there strange things? Mm -hmm. Unexplained, strange, unidentified. Well, I think strange. It's about the same, huh? I think strange things are what you make of them. Um, right. I'm of the opinion now that many strange things are happening. That's something mm -hmm. we'll talk about later, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, these things seem more or less normal now. Mm -hmm. And I'm not noticing the strange things because I take them as normal. Day. Yeah. So basically, you meet this wonderful woman under real strange circumstances, mm -hmm. and you have a lot in common. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I end up talking about. She's talking about Atlantis, and mm -hmm. then. Uh, I'm talking about, I don't know what, she's UFOs, I think it was at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, we kind of hit it off. Now, I gave her my photo and she gave me her photo. I wrote my name on the back of it, address. And, you know, I gave her my photo, she gave me hers, and yeah, I'll write to you, and so on. Now, all night we were talking and while this was going on, we were watching the lightning down below. Paris was lit up in the lightning. Mm -hmm. And Oops. the conversation was flowing. Now, you know when you have a conversation with someone, uh, time just doesn't exist. That's right. Um, and we were talking and suddenly the, the sun was coming up. Oh my, yeah, uh, what a conversation, happen. yeah. These things happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I guess it was love. Now, I still haven't figured out this love thing yet. That's okay. I'm trying to get you to Slovakia. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. what I'm trying to get. I'm getting Slovakia. there. I'm getting there. And um, we went. We stayed. We went to a park. I cut. The, I try and cut the story short. It's a long story. Mm -hmm. 
we went to a park and we sat in the park and we were talking and she then agreed to stay with me. It was kind of a universe thing, I guess. It was the 12th of August, mm -hmm. 1990. And we went back to her, the campsite afterwards. We stayed there for about three months. She tore up her ticket. She stayed with me. Together we hitchhiked then to Spain. We had no money. Mm -hmm. We had no direction. And oh, so it seemed? Or so it seemed. Oh, you, and your mother, was this, was your mother still angry? No, my mother was happy. She got over it. Okay, she good. was very happy. <laughs> very good. <laughs> and um, we stayed in Spain for a while. Mm -hmm. Many strange things happened there. Um, I've stopped using the word coincidence now because... That's good. Um, I don't believe in coincidence. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we were in Spain doing whatever we did. We were walking many miles in the hot sunshine, not having anything to drink, anything to eat, but I guess the universe provided. It always does. And um, then we, we went, my wife had a dream one night after all our adventures in Spain. I won't go into it now. We, she had a dream one night while we were in Spain about uh, Germany. Now, Germany never interested me as a country to visit. And she told that there would be a truck that would be in, the, in a parking place and would be going to Germany. She knew this before it happened, that mm -hmm. we'd be going to Germany and that we would be on that truck. Of course, she didn't find that unusual at, by that time. She didn't. She, she took it in her stride. She, she's like this. Yeah, no, I'm asking you. Are you asking me? So by that time, I don't. Uh, did you find it unusual? No, no, sorry, I didn't. By that time, yeah. By that time, I was beginning to listen closer to her. Mm -hmm. And... Um, not that I didn't listen to her, I did. But, but you're a husband, of course you have to listen. Well, you have to listen, I guess. <laughs> um, never argue with a woman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And um, what happened then? Yeah, sure enough, the truck came the in the truck. morning. Mm -hmm. And it was going to Mannheim in Germany. Mm -hmm. We stepped on the truck, we went to Mannheim. Now we lived in a, um, we had no accommodation or anything. and. We, we lived in the train station in Mannheim for a while, mm -hmm. which was nothing pleasant, and we had a small cat with us. We had a small cat because in Spain we found a, a black cat with an injured leg, mm -hmm. and no one wanted this cat because it was unlucky. So we took the cat with us. Uh, of course, in Germany it was a lot larger. larger. By that time, yeah. By that mm -hmm. time. And we named that cat Pip because we found it in orange field. And... Uh, I cut the Germany thing out as long story Germany, but we're in Germany for about eight months. Mm -hmm. And as I told my wife, is from Slovakia, so right. we went to Slovakia, mm -hmm. where we stayed for I think a month. We then hitchhiked to England um, to see my family. Mm -hmm. After England, we went back to Germany, where we were both working by that time, and. Um, we stayed in Germany again for several months before going on to what was then Czechoslovakia, before mm -hmm. the country divided. Now, now, the name of the show is Follow a Fox, which is your nickname, and then we turned it into Follow One's X Factor. Mm -hmm. Can you define X Factor for me? X Factor is an inner notion which we all carry. Now, all of us carry... Um, carry feelings in our heart. I believe that very much. And I think perhaps some people might be in tune with it more than others. And we all talk about happiness in life and how to find it. Now, there's many people out there trying to find happiness with money, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, work prospects, relationships. But true happiness is, true happiness is being one with yourself. I feel, yeah. uh, and and being aware of that happiness and allowing other people to be aware of, of themselves. So it's a sharing thing. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoy very much speaking with people and trying to delve into those people, so to speak, to see where they're mm -hmm. coming from. Yeah, so that's, uh, I just want to clarify that for the friends. And so you are following your X factor here, so to speak, and so you went back to England. And how many years would you say in between there? Two, three? Well, no, I was in um, Sl Slovakia for the, well after coming back from England yeah. that first time. We then stayed in Slovakia for uh, 
how, how long, maybe a year, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I was traveling again. I was hitchhiking down in Turkey and um, various European countries. That's all a different story. Yeah. Um, my, my stay in Slovakia was interspersed with traveling. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first arrived in Slovakia, I could not speak the language. That's right. The Slovak language officially belongs to one of the most difficult languages in the world. And when I first heard the people talking, I thought, how can they understand each other? And I've been there 10 years, as I told, mm -hmm. and been lucky enough to travel, and I have mastered the language to some degree. Mm -hmm. But I still make plenty of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about it. Yeah, but you used the flip side. You, you, you eventually uh, taught English. I taught English because mm -hmm. it was the only opening for me. Mm -hmm. And um, people said, well, I was looking for work, but it was difficult. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And people said, well, you must teach English. Yeah, we, we did a show um, on Wanderers. And, and uh, one of the things that came up in that is sometimes uh, we really don't know where we want to go and what we want to do. And I'm, I'm hearing this also, this conversation here. So I just like to remind the friends here, and you told me on a personal basis here that you don't hardly remember anything prior to that, and that's not unusual either. Well, my my childhood was a difficult one, and I know that many people mm -hmm. uh, in life, when when they're going through, be it a difficult childhood, a difficult time in life, they they blot out that pain. That's right. Yeah, we do. And I have no recollection of many years of my life. Mm -hmm. And often when I'm dreaming now, I'm trying to piece together the jigsaw pieces about the missing past. Mm -hmm. I will find myself going back to my school days, which were terrible, mm -hmm. going back to those school days and trying to figure out, put the jigsaw together, why things happened the way they did. Now I'm going to inter, uh, in, in inject to something. Yesterday, we, you met with a group of the friends uh, because you are visiting from somewhere else. And that subject kind of came up. And uh, one of the things that we found that most of the people there could identify with your school days because, do you remember what you told them? Uh, you have to remind me how many things. Well, I remember what you told them. What did I say? You, you said that, that you just, uh, you know, you, you felt different. You felt an outs like an outsider, and that they picked on you. And, uh, and then we found out that that happens to most of us people that is of a different frequency. Okay. So you are right on target with that. I always felt different, and I think that's one of the reasons why I had mm -hmm. those problems. And I wasn't aware of the time because I was following others. I was trying to, it's the identity thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we are all group animals. We feel mm -hmm. security in groups. And in order to have that security, you have to identify with that group. That's right. Which means putting on the mask and... That's the story you told. Yeah, that's that was what the I story. Want. I'm mm -hmm. getting there now. Yep. <coughs> putting on the mask and pretty much talking and behaving as the others do. Mm -hmm. And then one day, I think people, they took the mickey from that because, um, well, they were making fun of it mm -hmm. because I was very much manip manipulated by them and not knowing it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, Chris, you do this. Chris, you do that. We'll be your friend. So I did it. And then one day, um, one day I took off my mask. That's right. And I saw these people that I'd been, this was at college, this was when I was about, how old was I, about 17, 18 maybe, and um, 33 now. And I took off the mask as I told, and I, I laughed. Mm -hmm. And I laughed because I looked at the others and I, and I thought, I have no problems, you have problems. And that, that was the change. That was the change. That was the change. Yeah, that, that was somewhat important in, in your whole evolution as a, as a person here. Now, let's go back to the lady. Now, in the meantime, you're traveling, and, and then you eventually got married. That's right. And now you have children. 
That's right. Uh, I have two small boys, Christian and Alex. And Christian and Alex, if you're watching this, then hello, love you much. Mm -hmm. And Danielle. My wife is Dana, but I call her mm -hmm. Danielle. And that was all a different story in itself, with mm -hmm. uh, because my wife in Slovakia, she was always diagnosed as being a schizophrenic and mm -hmm. having psychosis. The friends are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, when we were back in Slovakia, I was, she was taken, her parents had pretty much a lot of control over her. Mm -hmm. Now they put her into a psychiatric unit. Now the psychiatric units in Slovakia uh, are terrible places. People walk mm -hmm. in these places and they come out in wooden boxes. Oh my. Doctors will... Sounds like prisons. <laughs> sounds like prisons. Doctors will experiment on these people and nothing's done about it. That's yeah. a different story. Now, with the birth of my first child, Christian, um, the thing is, after 10 days, you go to the hospital to collect your wife and child. I did that. Mm -hmm. I went to the hospital and the doctor told me, oh, yes, we weren't, I was, we weren't married at that time. We weren't married because it was a problem to get hold of documents. It was Czechoslovakia. I was traveling to Prague to my embassy, coming back to Slovak with the papers, and the officials were saying, these papers aren't valid. Mm -hmm. Now the doctor said, oh, but she's not your wife, and oh, by the way, she's in this psychiatric unit, and your child is in this other hospital. Mm -hmm. Now these doctor, this doctor was speaking English. I exploded because he was stupid. Uh, I know something about medicine, not a lot, but I know enough about medicine to, to know that he was talking rubbish. <coughs> So that was, there was a lot of conflicts there. And all the time I was fighting with doctors and I was fighting with, with my wife's parents. And that took a lot of energy from both myself and my wife. Mm -hmm. Too much energy. So eventually you got it resolved? Yes, but life, life throws surprises at you sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think my wife's on a journey also. Mm -hmm. We didn't meet for, for nothing. That's right, yeah. My wife is pretty much, uh, yes, she is my wife, but she's also my soulmate. That's wonderful, yeah. So, it, so then eventually you did get married. Um, uh, I, I need to bring you to this country here pretty soon. Okay. Okay, so, so then eventually you did get married, you resolved, uh, you, you got all this resolved, and then you have the two children. Right. And life is puddling right along. Yeah, it throws surprises mm -hmm. at you sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if you can, so then you became a teacher? I became a teacher, mm -hmm. and I've always enjoyed working with people. Mm -hmm. And, but when you work with people for, for a long time, you can only, it takes so much energy. And mm -hmm. I have always been interested in strange things, as I told. Mm -hmm. And I, in Slovakia, I was in the frame of mind where it was English, 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 English. Mm -hmm. And the world was carrying on outside of all that, and I wasn't in touch with it. So the world was running away and I was stuck in one place. Yeah. Mentally, that's very difficult. My wife has always been happy about me traveling. Mm -hmm. Why am I out here? Well... Yeah, take me to that point when, um, when the strangeness became a reality for you, if you will. When the strangeness became a reality, it's always been a reality. <laughs> it's difficult to say. Yeah, but it took on a physical form. It took on a physical form because the universe points you in direction sometimes. And you have to, it's a phrase we use a thousand and one times, go with the flow, follow your feelings. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't follow your feelings, I never as a person wanted to sit in front of a fire as an old man if I should ever reach mm -hmm. that age or that stage and say, well, I should have done this, I should have done that. Mm -hmm. Now, many of the viewers out there, if you feel you want to do something and you have a calling, then do it. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to do it. There's nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. We will walk around with blinkers. Yeah. And take those blinkers away and the whole world is all around mm -hmm. you. Please bring me to America. I have an insert I need to play. Okay. And then we can go back to your personal thoughts after. Uh, I'm not ready for the insert, but bring me to America now, please. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I met a friend uh, in Slovakia, and he invited me out here. Mm -hmm. um, I told him that I'm very interested in the whole UFO alien scene. Mm -hmm. uh, see, very interested would be understatement. And um, I was lucky enough to be invited out here mm -hmm. and um, 
to pursue my, I wouldn't say calling because there's still many unsaid things out there. Mm -hmm. um, and while out here, I have met with many strange things. Mm -hmm. I want to meet with many more strange things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clarify something for the friends here because I kind of know where I want to go with this. If you remember Daryl Sims, the alien hunter, um, we've, we've indirectly introduced you to him. We've played inserts from him. And, um, and uh, some of the strange things he ran into uh, was Daryl Sims. So we can just go there for a minute. And um, that sort of put a reality spin on things for you. That's where I was going with that. Okay. Yeah. And in the meantime, uh, because of some of the physical evidence, mm -hmm. you, you now came to America. That's right. And like I always tell the friends, when it's time for you to end up at my house, you do. Mm -hmm. So you did. I did, and I'm thankful for it. Mm -hmm. So when you came to the States, you went to Grand Junction? Grand Junction, Colorado, mm -hmm. <laughs> where I was for, I guess, two months. Mm -hmm. And yes, you mentioned Daryl Sims. I met with Daryl Sims in mm -hmm. Slovakia. Very, very human person, very interesting person. Uh, the work he does is on the leading edge um, as regards the implant scenario. Mm -hmm. And he has a whole tray full, doesn't he? He has a whole tray full. <laughs> and uh, he is a mind of information. That's right. Very interesting man to, to mm -hmm. talk with. Very open, very human. Now, I met him at a congress in Slovakia, mm -hmm. and I was trying to sit him down and talk with him, and he's a very patient man, but he was very busy there. Mm -hmm. And I managed to, to have many hours of conversation with him, mm -hmm. many interesting hours of conversation. And I was privy to um, interesting information and, and to seeing what he carries around in his pockets. That's so right, speak. yeah, so um, sometimes we get fortunate to do that. So while you were in Grand Junction, <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you ran into a very interesting person. I'm, I, I'm setting up for the clip here um, where one of the things that, that you were working on was interviewing people about strange occurrences and events. That's right. And you brought me, you brought me an insert with a, the gentleman is a, uh, what, what was his name? It's Kerry Wong. Kerry Wong, a martial? A martial artist. A martial artist. And so, Maybe we would want to share this, um, this this insert with the friends so they can see some of the people you met in your travels. Okay. Um, I'd like to just say though that, that the, the interview that you're about to see was very rough because everything was put together at the last minute. So, If it wasn't rough, the friends wouldn't like it. So okay. we don't have a problem with that at all. all. Right. So try and bear with it then. Yeah. So we're going Kerry, to Kerry. Yeah. Hello, Kerry. What? And, um, uh, Kerry has an interesting story to tell. Um, which happened in the summer of 96, whilst out practicing karate, I believe, uh, with your girlfriend, Michelle, uh, here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Um, I'll leave it to Kerry. Kerry? Um, right, it was um, the summer of 96, and my friend uh, Michelle and I were at the uh, area called Palisade here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Mountain Ranch called the Mesa, and while we were practicing, we observed a large uh, ball of light drop out of the sky, quite large, and uh, all over the Mesa area. How would you describe this this light? Um, it was uh, quite large, uh, luminous, yellowish green, and uh, white, real bright white around the uh, edges. Was it uh, any form of uh, aircraft or meteorite or light um, reflecting of helicopters, anything like that? Well, I've, it wasn't an aircraft, that's for sure. And I've heard of fireballs, um, but it looked like a fireball. But what uh, was different to me than what I've heard described about fireballs is that it was quite large and it appeared out of nowhere. Um, there was no trail, and there was no impact. As for the size that it was, if it was a fireball, it would have it would have wiped out, you know, most of North America. Yeah, I mean that's 
can say that the same thing happened with dinosaurs when we had the dinosaurs uh, right. still alive, so I guess it wasn't a meteorite. Uh, was there any sound attached to that? No, there was no sound. And how did you first notice this uh, this one? Um, well, my friend and I, we couldn't help but noticing because it was so large. And it just appeared out of nowhere and immediately dropped into the mountain or behind the mountain or we couldn't really tell where it went. Uh, what, what dimensions would you, would you give it? How big was it? Um, since it was kind of cartoon looking, it's hard to say if it was, you know, anywhere from 30, to me, anywhere from 30 yards in diameter to 100 yards in diameter. Um, the mountain range that it fell nearby it was at least uh, big enough to, uh, uh, well, it, it was about a quarter of the size of the mountain range that it fell by. You mentioned like cartoon in character. What, what do you mean by that? It just, it looked like it was animated. It didn't look real. How would you describe the, the colors, the like, sensation that you had on the scene? Um, the colors were yellowish green. And around the edges, it was uh, kind of mirror white, light looking, glassy. Like, even you know, more of like a dimensional thing. It wasn't like a craft, like a flying saucer or anything like that. Um, it looked more like something from a different dimension came into this dimension. And how did that catch your eye? Um, how did you first perceive it? Uh, well, it was one of awe, and, you know, we were quite awestruck by it, and that's what you mean. Well, how did it come into your field of vision, is what I'd like to ask. Um, well, again, it was a clear blue, I mean, it was a clear day, and uh, we were practicing it out in an area where there were no trees around us or anything like that, so anybody in that area could have helped with those. And were there other people that were witness to this event? No, just me and my friend that I was practicing martial arts with. Because um, the area that we lived in, or she lived in, was kind of secluded. It was a orchard um, area. So there were like, farms and stuff in there, or orchard. When you saw it falling down, were you expecting an impact of, it, of any, any sort? Uh, well, I wasn't expecting anything, but you know, looking back on it, it if it was a meteor or fireball, yeah, there would have been an impact. I mean, it would have wiped out that whole mountain from what I saw and how large I think it was to me. Was this your first experience with something strange, or had you had past experiences? No, I've never had any experiences with anything like that before. Immediately following uh, this sighting, how did you feel? Um, I felt pretty good, you know, I've never seen anything like that before, so as far as phenomenon, it was quite exciting. Um, did you not suffer any, uh, headaches or any illnesses, nothing strange? No. Uh, and, um, have you told anyone about this? Um, yeah, afterwards I told quite a few people, you know, friends and relatives. What was their reaction? Um, I had mixed reactions, um, some of them could have cared less, other ones were like, you know, cool, and uh, then there were others that, uh, from what I've described, they said that they had heard of things like this in this area. Have you heard many similar stories from other people? Not like mine. In what ways does your do feel different? Well, I've heard of uh, things in this area that, that I've heard of. I'm sure there's people that hadn't told us what they've seen. Of more of like crafts, um, flying saucers and stuff that are actually physical looking. And uh, then there was an incident that happened the next day after this that I've never heard anything like from anyone in this area. Can you tell us something more about that? Um, well, the next day I was with the same friend. Uh, we were at a gas station uh, getting some uh, gas filling up. And uh, a black vehicle pulled up uh, with black tinted windows. And uh, a, a guy got out dressed in black pants and a, and a white shirt. And he had black sunglasses on. 
And while I was pumping gas, he started making some odd conversation. So, um, this meeting you had in, in the garage with um, uh, this perhaps man in black, um, have you had any similar things happen to you afterwards? Not that direct. Um, there were a couple incidences where um, it was definitely the same energy signature that I knew that it was the same kind of thing. How would you describe this uh, energy signature? You spoke a little earlier about it. Um, is it more a feeling of someone watching you? Or how would you describe it exactly? Yeah, it's more of a feeling that somebody's watching you, like that guy right up there. He just disappeared. He was on the balcony. He was on the balcony yeah. watching you just now? Yeah, there was a guy that just popped up the balcony and was watching and just disappeared. Okay. Um, I didn't see him in my full vision, but I could tell something was there and I looked up and he was there. So do you feel that they're perhaps watching us now? Well, sure, we're always being watched. Of course we're always being watched, Big Brother is out. Yeah. Um, what exactly is Big Brother? Who's controlling that? And who's being controlled by who is another question. Right. Um, do these things get on top of you sometimes when you, when you have these feelings? How, how do you cope with that? Well, when, you're, when a person is really paranoid, they can draw in uh, negative energies. And... Uh, can draw in energies that play on your fears. Uh, but these particular beings that I ran into, I didn't feel paranoid. I didn't feel paranoid around them. If anything, I believe that they were on an unconditional love, non-judgmental assignment. Um, uh, at that time in my life, encouraging me to relax and spread the message that relaxation is power. Um, and uh, a synonym for the word relax uh, that I had found is, is grace. Um, so I'm learning not to to judge one way or another about the light and and the dark. Um, that there is a, a plane and that there is a place in relaxing where you, there's there's peace from the sacred self. So how would you in one word um, say that this this sighting changed it in one word? Well it it made me realize that from my martial art practices and, uh, one word. Oh in one in one word? Uh, well let me rephrase the question okay. better. Um, what feelings do you have um, as a result of your sighting? That everything is as it should be. And Ali. that I'm okay. I need to get away with that. And that there is a level of perception out there that uh, is peace. A peaceful perception. Peace. Peace. Good. Thank you very much. I sort of admired your uh, interview skills there because uh, you ask a question and then you said one word. <laughs> so that's sort of what we're doing today too, you know. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we're in Grand Junction and um, so we have a lot of mutual friends there. That's right. And it's a, it's a, it's a strange place, isn't it? Grand Junction is a very strange place, and um, there is a lot of energy in Grand Junction, mm -hmm. strange energy, and there are many, many sightings of lights in Grand Junction mm -hmm. coming in and out of the surrounding hills there. And personally, I feel there is a lot you see, people, when they, when they talk about UFOs, they look skywards. Oh, they say they're from other planets and so on, but nothing's that simple. Yeah, it's, it's a UFO, it's an unidentified flying object. That's right. And in Grand Junction, in Grand Junction, they sit right on top of your head while you're sitting at Dennis. I've seen it. Well, they sit on top of your head or... I mean, not literally, you know, just not hover, literally. hovering, that's a better word. Or they're under your feet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm of the opinion that um, 
the that underground junction there are very very large underground um, tunneling systems where let's say many stra strange things uh, happen and this being one area of very many here in in the states yeah. so you picked a, a very good place to uh, to learn about America and some of us strange people live in there and, and so I understand you're getting ready to write some articles now. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'd like to write. I'm getting ready to write some articles, but I'm still waiting for the correct signals as to what, because there are many things to write about. Mm -hmm. And I think in writing, it's good to concentrate or to focus on one thing rather mm -hmm. than a thousand things at once. So what exactly it will be uh, is undecided as, as at present, but I would like very much to uh, pursue the, the whole UFO alien uh, agenda, mm -hmm. um, but to dig as deeply into that as allowed. As fun as we always think we can solve all these problems, but it's not that simple because there's a lot of rules and regulations and misinformation and um, I, I want to share this story with you. Uh, Chris is very good at materializing things. So when he came to my home he said, oh I, I'm, I'm so excited to be here doing this alignment and um, because there is a, an open area behind where I live, he said, I sure would like for some somebody to land, something to land and then you thought you're full. So instead, what landed was a uh, search and rescue helicopter that was over at the fun fair. So that's right. Be specific what you ask for. Always be specific. Uh, specific before you put the messages out there. Mm -hmm. uh, presently, I am lucky enough to be staying with Lillian, and um, there was a fun fair next door to mm -hmm. her house, and I was in a hall, and I came back in, and as Lillian said, she said, "Oh." She said, did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? Something's landed. Mm -hmm. And knowing Lillian, I thought, well, <laughs> um, yes, well, I missed, I missed the biggest event in history. And she, yeah, you did, search and rescue. Search and rescue <laughs> helicopters. So. Yeah. Um, I wasn't specific. But you was halfway there. You did materialize something landing in my backyard. So that was, that was you know, you can look at it as the, a copy half empty or half full. That's right. So you was halfway there. You just have to specify who you need landing. I understand you're going to go home for a little while. That's uh, right. Home meaning? Home meaning um, Slovakia. Slovakia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's difficult when, when people ask me, well, where are you from? Ah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Because I, I cannot tie myself down to one country. And um, so I think... It's really finding finding where your home is. Um, I never felt patriotic to my country. I never felt um, at one with my country. That's nothing against England. That's just my personal feelings. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I can't be tied down to one country. Many people out there, I think, will identify with that also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've had guests like that. Now, on a pro okay, how about this? I'm going to put you in charge of of universe, not universe, of, of your surroundings today. Uh, what would you change? Um, like you said to the man, one word, what would you change? Perception. Perception, ah, that's interesting. Uh, perception of, we all have our own perception of reality. Mm -hmm. And we cannot define reality as meaning, as a dictionary definition, definition meaning this is reality. We can't put things in a box mm -hmm. and label them. Reality is different for everybody. Now what forms reality is one's perception of the world around you. Um, be it this physical world or the interdimensional mm -hmm. worlds. So I do believe at present there is a greater awareness that's happening among people. And I do hope that finally one day people will wake up 
to, to life, to the beauty of life, to the strangeness of life. Mm -hmm. And life is so much more than the nine to five and going to bed and the repetition. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in your travels, have you found that this subject is more accessible to the people in other places? I find that, uh, well, I personally, I've been lucky enough to meet people mm -hmm. uh, of... Like uh, mind. You like mind, yes. And during my travels, as I told earlier, I enjoy speaking with anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. And in my own, I don't know, I'm trying to, trying to do my own thing, I guess, trying to... I'm not special in any way. I don't want to get that thought across, but I'm, I want to. I want to wake people up. I'm trying to wake people up, and um, life is life is a, is an adventure and a journey, be it good or bad. Um, you have good times. You have bad times. Yeah. So now, um, it, because we do go with what you call the flow, and we, we use that word occasionally. Um, we can't really make long-term projections because that's just, uh, we can, our circumstances sometimes flip on a dime. That's right. So at best we can do is bless the people that have brought us from point A to point B. That's right. And from B to C. From B to C, who knows? Uh, it's out there. Mm -hmm. Personally, my life flipped on the dime yesterday, so mm -hmm. we know what we're talking about. Yeah, and so where, where do you eventually hope to be? In where your I, personal growth and things. In my personal growth, I hope to be where um, <coughs> my heart belongs. And my heart belongs wherever it's meant to be. Yeah, it's, we almost come full circle here because right. it's how we started out. We don't really know what's around the corner there. And, 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 and in the meantime, are you going to have a lot of stories to tell your wife? Too many stories. Too many stories. I hope she has stories to tell me also, mm -hmm. as I'm sure she will. And um, I hope that the book isn't closed yet and that many stories are waiting out there yet to be read. Mm -hmm. well, well, speaking of books, you indicated to me that you might know somebody that's willing to translate my book into what language was that's it? Right. What, that's right. Into language? Slovak. Into Slovak, yeah. And uh, because, you know, we don't have political boundaries anymore. People are really sort of... We don't have political boundaries, and uh, Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, was cut off from the West for so many years. Mm -hmm. And the literature coming into the country now uh, is good and bad. Not mm -hmm. everything from the West is good. And um, if any of you out there ever get a chance to meet with Lillian, or if you're reading her book now, don't flick through the book, but size up every word. All of those words are balanced. And if you read that book closely, then that is Lillian. So I'd encourage you, please read the book. Yeah, that, that's good advice because I had a lot of bad lessons <laughs> passing on. So if you can learn from that, you don't have to travel around. I the whole it. world end up at my house. You could have called me to, <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> well, I'm learning from you now, Lillian. I am learning a hell of a lot from you. And... Um, I thank you for that. You know, we're all equally important, and uh, it just in a few days, look at the people that, that you have met. And each, yeah, each time somebody comes into our lives, they're there for a reason, uh, good or bad, like you said, and, um, and just so on and so on and so on. And every time you think that you got it all figured out, here comes a fox. Well, ah, maybe. Fox medicine. <laughs> fox medicine. Mm -hmm. Life is a journey, and the people we meet are uh, the signpost along the way. Mm -hmm. So when you're out there meeting people, follow those signposts and you can't go wrong. Would you want to change anything? Change anything? Um, change anything? Well, good question. What would I like to change? I'd like to change... I'd like to see people understanding each other finally. I think... There is a great awareness out there, but there's a lot of cruelty and there's many terrible things happening. Will you encourage your children to keep that, that innocence, that open-mindedness? I hope so. 
Um, certainly, I, it's, that goes without saying as a parent, but there are so many influences out there in the modern day society that unfortunately are shaping our future children, some of our future children into, let's say, role models that were not laid out some 50 years ago. The modern day society children are affected by computer games, there's too much violence, we see it on the news every evening. Why we see dead bodies on television, I don't know, I guess it pulls in the audience. And children watch this and there's murder and there's mayhem. And for children to separate, let's say, let's use that word reality again, um, between what is reality and what is fiction is difficult for many people, I feel. But man as a species has been cruel for a long time. Actually, I think these sort of have sort of calmed down a little. Would you agree? They have calmed down. There's many strange things happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. um. and, and then get back to the, to the X factor and to the aliens there for a minute. You know, when they sort of uh, look at us, and I do believe that they are beings, uh, you know, present uh, sometimes, they look at us as the people of the Earth. And, and they don't make these uh, distinctions between politics and countries. And That's right. I think the one day where the country, the boundaries of countries are taken away and we are, we are taken away from the brainwashing that's going on out there and that finally if one day we can live, learn to live mm -hmm. on this planet as our home and not to be divided or segregated with political boundaries, mm -hmm. then so much the better. That's really cool. I, I, you, so you're going to be here a little longer, so I'm hoping that uh, some kind of way we can, uh, you know, prepare for another show and introduce to friends some of the more um, drastic things that you do, that you encountered um, while you have been here. Thank you. And um, it only rained a little bit for you. It usually rains a lot. Well, it's it's very nice to see the rain because Colorado doesn't see a lot of rain, mm -hmm. or at least it hasn't while I was down there. And it's mostly desert down there, so to come in here to Olympia, Washington, is great because it's green and you can smell the air, it's so fresh. The people are different. We don't have any alligators for you. Um, I share your passion for alligators, so that's why okay. we have our friends present here. I think they're just pretty uh, wonderful creatures. Alligators, snakes, um, all animals in general. Animals are innocent and... I just love animals, and we couldn't have a snake in the studio. We couldn't no. find one. The, well, we had grasshoppers. Um, grasshoppers. We had grasshoppers, and we've had cats, and uh, and so. But all in all, I I think in a short time we sort of got a general idea who you are and where your heart is, and um, that's that's pretty cool. And all in all, I I when you do leave, I hope you have a really safe journey and. Lots of times when you fly, um, does it give you the feeling that you're off the face of the earth? It gives me the feeling that I'm going uh, off the face of the earth. No, it, it gives me the feeling that I'm going to another place on this wonderful planet uh, to open up a new journey. Mm -hmm. And um, when my feet are on the ground, it's okay. I like flying because that gives me a second, uh, you know, like like a dual reality here. And I'm really, you really are off the planet, you know, when you're up there. And you've right. got people eating up there and doing things, and they don't think about us down here. That's so you've got right. a whole different world up there. That's about as close as um, space we're going to get. Yeah, but I mean, as you're watching, as, as the viewers are watching this program now, there's a million and one... Um, things happening above our heads, a million and one stories going on. There's people up there now talking. There's maybe a man sat on a plane now and he's looking at the woman opposite and thoughts are going through his head. Maybe he's, the woman's looking at the man, thinking the same thing. I think it's almost time for you to go home. I think you just missed your wife. I miss my wife. <laughs> I miss my wife. You miss your wife. Well, we're going to have to do something about that. Okay. And maybe next time you visit, you'll... Uh, you bring her with you, how's that? I'd well, like that very we much. We get to meet her. We have a friend, uh, Ramona, that 
she would probably get along with very well. I like that very much. Um, the difficult thing with being out here is I am meeting so many beautiful people and I, I feel sad, the sadness where my wife, my children and family are not able to enjoy that with me and that's very difficult. It's okay to go back and tell the stories, mm -hmm. show the photos, but you really have to be here or to be somewhere to appreciate exactly what is going on. Well, so you just create a reality that she'll come with you the next time. In the meantime, you can you know, share a tape with her and um, uh, just take a, um, a love from the friends. And, okay. you know, we go all through the country and, and um, all in all, it's been a wonderful visit. And uh, that wasn't so hard, was it? Well, it could have been worse, but... Um, <laughs> worse. <laughs> Here, get the glasses half full and half empty. <laughs> You're okay. I enjoyed it very much, and I thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, you're really, really welcome. And um, are you going to maintain your name, Fox? That's a good name for you. I like the name Fox. Yeah, it, I think it's very soothing. I mean, you know, it's very suitable for you. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we have a meteorite sitting in the middle of the table, and you've... Um, the friends have seen that before. I want to draw your attention to that. That's not just a, a regular stone. That's the meteorite. And <coughs> and sometimes we do need off-earthly things to get us grounded. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. It does send out vibrations. Mm -hmm, it does. And uh, it's good to keep your feet on the ground sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or on a meteorite, depending. <laughs> or on a meteorite. Or on a meteorite, depending on, a meteorite. on what, what, what it's called for. And um, so I think we covered just about anything. It's a delight meeting you. Thank you and, very much um, again. Uh, stay in touch with the friends and Thank you. Uh, safe journey. Thank you very okay, much. Bye bye. Goodbye. Um, come and join us next week. Bye.